do we explain magic? In this video, you'll learn what magic is and why it's important. In part two, you'll hear about rituals and how magic acts as a weapon. And the last part will discuss religion. Prepare for controversies, history, and plenty of speculation. I'm Madeline Rose Jones, and this is Snowy Fictions. Part one, defining magic in the age of science. Throughout history, people have used different definitions of what magic is. A magician could be a witch in early modern England or a healer in ancient Egypt. Established philosophers such as Plato and Augustine commented on magic in their works. Today, magic is still relevant. We have best-selling fantasy fiction, but we also have astrology and many groups such as Wiccans incorporate magic in their practices. Magic is part of history. Now, I know what I'm thinking about that statement. Magic doesn't exist, right? It's not like I can grab a stick and make it omit magic. I could hex someone I dislike, yet that doesn't increase the likelihood of something bad happening to them. Magic doesn't exist in the same way food or water exists. Then, I think we need to take a nuanced look on what magic is. Magic exists in the same way that beauty or ugliness exists. There's a subjective element, and what one considers being magical will differ from another. There's also scholarship about how ancient and modern societies use magic to change reality. Even crossing your fingers for a desired outcome could be seen as practicing magic or engaging with the divine power. Much of superstition today has roots of magic. Not only that, but much of our scientific scholarship was built on the work by scholars and practitioners who dealt with magic. Look at chemistry. Thanks to alchemists like Albertus Magnus, our understanding of chemistry has improved. Likewise, the field of astronomy built on the astrology from medieval and renaissance Europe. Yet, how does this happen? I want to introduce a concept of thinking magically. It's when your mind is open to magic existing and uncovering knowledge that you may not have access to. Magical thinking doesn't always mean making spells or potions. It applies to those who theorize and speculate about anything. Magical thinking is an investigation where one deepens their understanding of the world in ways beyond physical evidence. However, one must be careful when engaging with magical thinking. If you attribute a natural disaster solely to magic, then that is a logical fallacy. This video focuses more on the imaginative side of magical thinking and how previous generations used it to further human knowledge. We must avoid delusional thinking, but as always, let's have a bit of fun with it. Many alchemists and astronomers in the Middle Ages and in the classical world engaged in magical thinking regardless of their religion. They weren't satisfied that they knew everything there was to know. There's a misconception many have about religion that it's close-minded as opposed to curious, opening. An outstanding example of what I'm talking about is Roger Bacon, whose development in optics revolutionized the medieval university curriculum. Because of that, we should not equate religion and superstition with clear-cut ignorance. The truth is far more nuanced. Part 2. Magic as a weapon. In fantasy, magic isn't always an experimental force that helps us have knowledge in different subjects. Magic in fantasy fiction almost always functions like a weapon. When someone performs a magical ritual, they are trying to cause a desired outcome. Unlike science, which does not need rituals to exist, magic needs the intention of the caster to cause change. That's why a lot of fantasy fiction is weapons based, meaning magic is used to transform a property from A to B. For example, in Harry Potter, the wizards use wands to manipulate their physical environments. 
This dates back to Homer's The Liliad, where the god Hermes used the magical wand to send people to sleep. And likewise, in the Odyssey, the goddess Circe turns Odyssey's men into pigs. Because of that, magic can be seen as a way to get what you want. There's nothing wrong with that, but magic is more than a weapon or a plot device. Magic is how we understand the world in ways that aren't obvious to the naked eye. One can master the sciences, but still hunger for more information. I'd like to see creative interpretations of magic in fiction. One reason why Harry Potter was so successful is that you had characters learning about magic and weren't full masters in it. You got to see their journey progress. This also allowed for mystery within the books. Also, magic reminds us that we will never know everything about life and death. If we knew everything, then what's the point of theorizing or speculating? Because of that, magic reminds us to seek more knowledge. Part three, magic and religion. There are significant differences between magic and religion. However, it's important to not treat either as entirely different from each other. There is overlap. For example, look at the act of praying in Christianity. The act of praying is technically a ritual. In most circumstances of prayer, someone is looking for a desired outcome. Whilst it could be seen as magical thinking, prayer is not an attempt at magic. What I mean is that when you say you may say a prayer, that doesn't mean you are trying to commit magic or anything like that. Yet the core difference between magic and religion is faith. Religion requires the mental effort to believe in a higher being and to continue that faith and dedication. Magic, although it uses some principles of religion, does not have that requirement. Another important consideration is the intent of the person praying. Whilst they want a certain outcome, they usually want it to occur with no input from themselves. Prayer evokes a relationship between man and God and is essentially asking God for action. Whereas in magic, the action lies mostly with the spell caster. There's a difference between praying for rain and making it rain. Another similarity magic has with religion is symbolism. The crucifix will have a special meaning to particular people as it's symbolic of Christ's sacrifice. Other objects that aren't religious do not possess that. We also see symbolism in magic. In the papyri of ancient Greece, certain curses reference Greek gods and mythos. Both magic and religion remind us that people will always seek a connection beyond what they can see. Not that there is no scientific basis for magical practices in the ancient world. Historically, ancient Persia has interesting records of the Magi, the priests of Zoroastrianism. They were keepers of knowledge and science. They used such information to keep time, predict eclipses and to heal the sick. Another way to understand magic is through storytelling. Look at magical squares and how the Persians and ancient Chinese perceive them. Today, you can find magical squares in the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Magic squares are used for storytelling. Remember how I mentioned China? The Lu Shao magic square from the Ming Dynasty tells a story about a legendary flood in China. Therefore, magic is not just a way to make things happen, but it's also a method to tell stories, connect with people, and to share a culture. Although the lines between religion, science, and magic often blur together, we should study them to better understand the world. Please subscribe if you like these kind of videos, and comment below with any thoughts you have about magic. Thank you.